Before we can attach our zip line to the tree, we'll need a good connection point. That's where this 10 foot tow cable comes in handy. You don't have to get the exact same length, but be sure you have one that can wrap completely around the tree and still have room to connect both ends. Be sure to check the weight capacity as well. This one is rated for several thousand pounds. To help protect the tree, we're gonna install a couple of two by four blocks before we install the cable. Nope. <laughs> Can't say I wasn't putting pressure on it. <laughs> if you need an extra hand holding the cable up, leave a few screws sticking out to keep the cable from sliding down. If you want, you can put some duct tape around the wires to keep it tight around the tree, but be sure and remove once you start tightening your wire. The next item in line is the turnbuckle, which will help put our final tension on the zip line once installed. Before we hook this up, make sure both ends are threaded all the way out so we don't have to do this once the cable is installed. Let's get our zipline cable ready to hook to the turnbuckle. After overlapping roughly two feet of cable, starting at the cut end, we will install three to four cable clamps to hold the wires together. To make sure these cable clamps stay in place, we are swapping out all the factory nuts with lock nuts. To help keep the wire from crimping at the loop, we're gonna install this wire thimble where the bolt goes through. You may want to wrap some duct tape around the ends to help protect the wire. All right, this looks good to go. Let's get it hooked on the tree. Before we pull this over to the other tree, let's talk a little bit about the wire we're using today. We decided to go with the 5 16 galvanized wire, which will help prevent corrosion and is plenty strong to carry any would-be zip liner. We've got about 150 feet between trees, but we decided to leave an additional 100 feet of cable attached in case we ever want to move to a further tree in the future. To get the tension on the zip line, we're going to be using this two-ton come along with the help of this tow strap. When installing the tow strap on the tree, don't worry about getting it all the way up to the final position of the zip line. I'll show you a trick for moving it up once we get the wire around the tree. Now that we got our come along attached to the tree, we can hook it to our zip line cable and start pulling it up. To properly grab onto the cable safely, I recommend using one of these cable grips which are designed specifically for this type of work. Try to pull up as much of the cable by hand before hooking it into the cable grips. You may need someone to help you with this part. All right, let's start cranking this thing up. Yeah! Once we've got the cable as tight as we can get it, go ahead and wrap it around the tree and install three to four cable clamps like we did on the other end. You'll notice we installed a section of rubber hose on the wire to help protect the tree. After you've got your clamps good and tight, you can start backing off the tension on your come along until all the pressure is on the zip line cable. Now just move up your come along and repeat the same steps until you get your zip line in its final position. Remember that it's okay if it's not super tight. The turnbuckle on the other end will get us the rest of the way. That looks good. Let's head over to our turnbuckle and put on the final tension. It's a little easier to tighten if you use some longer pry bars to get leverage. All right, well this cable's tight. Let's slap on our brake and get to zip lining. Be sure to check back for part three of this series where we show you how to build and install this bungee braking system. All right, here goes nothing.